Well, would Jesus join stand to your feet? Book of John. John chapter number 19. John 19, examine from verse number 30. The soldiers came and broke the leg of the first. And the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw he was already dead. And they did not break his leg. My God. For these things we had done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Everybody read that none of his bones shall be broken. Aha. The bone keeper, the bone keeper, pull on someone and say he's the bone keeper. When you read scriptures, you find things that boggles the mind. It may be hard to comprehend, but it is not a fable. Jesus says, I came. I came to fulfill. I came. Can we read? Don't you think I came to destroy the law of the prophet? But I came not to destroy, but to what? To fulfill my coming is to fulfill those things that we are written at four times. Now, the next verse it says, Heaven and earth may pass away, but not one thing written in the book shall pass away until is fulfilled. You must understand that the word of God, the prophecies of scripture are all pointing towards Jesus Christ. There are over 300 prophecies that we are giving concerning the Messiah. Over 300 prophecies spanning across 2,000 years by several different prophets from Moses, Isaiah, even unto Malachi. These are prophesied either of the coming, the life, or the death of Jesus. And all these things are to come to pass in the life of one man. If any of this thing is amiss, that means that this cannot be the Messiah. Are, you, are we okay now? Three over 300 prophecies are given concerning one man to describe the Messiah, the true Messiah that should come. And if any of this prophecy does not come to pass, whoever has come is a force. My goodness, how can we have all of these things fulfilled in the life of one man? Child of God, can I talk to you? One of these prophecies is what we saw at the cross of Jesus. Now, please understand, is one thing for prophecies to be fulfilled while he was alive. Now, because you could have said maybe he made it to happen. Maybe he read it and he just walked in it. No. But sir, how about when he died? How about when he died? What control has he over what happens after his death? It is one thing for him to manipulate the fulfillment while he was alive. But it is another thing. It is mind-blowing that when the man is dead, that which was spoken is still coming to pass what kind of a god is this that even though the man is dead he is still able to fulfill that which was spoken concerning him you are not hearing me while he was alive he was fulfilling scriptures concerning his life one after the other but so I cannot talk to you it is one thing to fulfill it while you are alive but how about when you die what control do you have to make happen that which was spoken concerning you i feel the holy ghost pushing me this morning because somebody under the sound of my voice there is a word that god has spoken over you and you are here wondering when how will it come to pass i am here to tell you that with man it may be impossible but with god 
wish I had power on this mic, I would have told you to write the vision and make it plain that they may run that read it. For the vision is for an appointed time. It may be delayed. It may tarry. But wait for it. It shall come to pass. It will not lie. For God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Oh my God, he can't do it. I say he can't do it. I found your neighbor say he can't do it. I don't know what he told you that we happened this year, but I am trying to tell you he's gonna do it before December. He gonna do it. I say he can't do it. God gonna do it. I said God will do it. I said God will do it. Raise your right leg, holla fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I had power on this mic. Sit for a while. Upara. It is one thing for the man to make prophecy come to pass while he was alive. But how do you make it come to pass when you are dead? What control do you have over your body after death? But can I talk to you? When God speaks, are you hearing me? Heaven and earth may pass away. When God speaks, your father's house may collaborate with the altars of your mother's house. It will not stand against what God has said. I feel the Holy Ghost to prophesy to you the word of God over your life. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. Hala fire three times. Shout again. Shout again. Shout it louder. Everything that was prophesied concerning his coming. Concerning his life, concerning his death, everyone must come to pass. It's not a prayer. Why are you saying amen? If any one of these things remain unfulfilled, then this is not the Messiah. Jesus Christ, over 300 prophecy in his lifetime has been fulfilled. When he died, the Bible says he hung on the cross. And the Bible says he gave up the ghost. And the Bible says, and when the soldiers came, because the timing of his death, the Bible says when they came to break his leg, because there was a prophecy spoken concerning him. Because in Psalm chapter 34, in verse number 20 the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord got delivered out of them all he kept his bones so that none shall be broken my god my god my god he kept his bones so that none is broken not one there was a prophecy spoken by the psalmist in Psalm 34 that one of the things you are going to know that this is the Messiah. He says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Somebody say the righteous. Come on say the righteous. Now he's talking about the Messiah. He said but God despite all he gonna go through. How you know that God has ordained him to be the Messiah. At the end of the day after all the affliction when you examine his bone not one will be broken not one will be broken he may go through hell but his bone will not break i feel the holy ghost he may go through high water but his bone will not break all hell will break loose at him but not one bone will break there is somebody under the sound of my voice I am here to tell you God's word. Despite your trial and your tribulation, God is committed to make sure not one bone. I wish I had power.
now on this mic when the righteous shall come he will go through hell he will go through many affliction he said but God Almighty will deliver him out of them all he said but watch it he will preserve his bones and none shall be broken he will preserve his bones he will go through hell they will try to kill him but his bones will not be broken he will go through hell but his bones will not be broken he will go through high water but his bones will not be broken they will betray him but his bones will not be broken they will reject him but his bones will not be broken they will crucify him but his bones will not be broken i don't know who you are what you're going through but i hear god to tell you no matter what you go through your bones will not be broken no matter who comes no matter who goes your bones will not be broken no matter the inflation no matter your tears your bones will not be broken god is faithful he will keep you god is faithful he will preserve you no matter what you go through, the ball will not be broken. Say my bones will not be broken. Say my bones will not be broken. I find your neighbor, say neighbor, don't let my skeleton fool you. I am unbreakable. Say neighbor. I am seeable, but I am unbreakable. I am pushable, but I'm unbreakable. I am seeable. I am unbreakable. No devil can break me. No situation can break me. No pain can break me. Nothing high can break me. No man can break me. No witch can break me. No altar, no pain, no man, no demon, nothing high, nothing low. I am unbreakable because greater is he that is in me than the devil that is in the world. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor, you are unbreakable. You are unbreakable. See all the hell you don't be true. You didn't break. They tried to kill you. You didn't break. They pushed you over, but you didn't break. They bent you over, but you didn't break. I am still here, not by power, not by might. If it had not been for the I wish I had several pieces that we are unbreakable. I wish I had several pieces that are unbreakable. I am unbreakable. I am unbreakable. I am unbreakable. No situation can break me. No situation. Hey! I wish I had power here. 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 Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. You can't break me. You can't break me. You may leave me. I won't break. You may talk about me. I won't break. I can go to hell. I won't break. I will be stronger, wiser. Hey! 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 Yeah! Yeah! I am the bone the devil could not break. I am the bone the devil could not break. Oh. I am the bone the devil could not break. I am the bone the devil could not break. I am the bone the devil could not break. I am the 
Like a twig, if he could, if he could, he would have snatched you, broke you in two. But I am the bond the devil could not break. I am the bond the devil could not break. I am the bond the devil could not break. I am the bond the devil could not break. I am the bond the devil could not break. I am the bond the devil could not break. I am the bond the devil could not break. I am the bond the devil could not break. Again, don't stand, don't stand, don't stand. You keep on standing, you're gonna mess me up. That's somebody's song this week. Oh, you will update your status. Make the devil mad. Hey, I am the bond that devil could not break. I am the bond that devil could not break. I am the bond that devil could not break. It's a song of the spirit. It's a song of the spirit. We have become a mystery. I say I'm a mystery. You, you don't understand. I say I'm a mystery. You know, sometimes you all sing that song. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. You are the eyes I used to see. You are the key that opens the door. You are the owner of my soul. The bush, the bonnet, I never consume. What shall I render? No, 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 hush, hush. No, no. When you sing that song, you thought you were praising God. You are the bush, the bonnet, and never cause him. God says, No, 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 no. That's you. Say, What do you mean? When the angel appeared at the burning bush, he said to Moses, Take off your shoes, for the ground on which you stand is holy ground. The Bible said, Moses saw the bush. The bush was burning, but the fact that the bush was burning was not what intrigued Moses. What intrigued Moses was that the bush was burning, and yet it was not consumed. It is not a mystery to see a bush on fire, but it's a mystery to see a bush on fire, but yet not one smell of smoke is upon the bush. It was a picture of what Israel was going through. They were going through the furnace, the fire of affliction. But despite the fire, they were not burning. Despite the fire, they were growing strong. Inside the flame, the fire that was sent to consume them, it became a mystery. The more they burned them, the more they grew. The more they burned them, they grew stronger. In their prayer life, they grow stronger. There is somebody here. Look at all the hell. And you don't been through, but you are still here. You are burning, but you are not consumed. Your finances is burning, but you are not consumed. You have become a mystery to the heavens. You have become a mystery. Just hey, touch your neighbor, say neighbor. I am the bush that is burning. It's not consumed. Higher. Hey! I am the bush that is burning. My 
my God. My God. Hiya, mama. I'm a bush that is burning. Put trust in your pockets. I'm a bush burning. I'm not consumed. I'm a mystery. So the next time you sing, the bush that burn it, look inwards. The bush that burn it and never consume. That's your title. I said, that's your title. I said, that's your title. That's your title. Oh my God. Where were we? I said, don't stand again. If you are going to appreciate the fact that his bones were not broken, you must go back in the Old Testament. Because the New Testament is a fulfillment of that which was spoken in the Old. The Bible says, the Old Testament, the Bible says everything that God will do in the New, he first begin in the Old. You remember the life of Joseph. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 40, at the end of his life, when you read all the way to the last three verses of Genesis 49, at the death of Joseph, the Bible says, and Joseph gave a command. In Genesis 49 and verse 24, the Bible says, Joseph, when he was about to die, the Bible says, and Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you. I wish I had three amens. Don't your neighbor say, God will visit you. Oh, say neighbor, God will surely visit you. Oh, pull on someone, say neighbor, God will surely visit you. 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 If I said nothing else, I came to tell you that God will surely visit you. I said God will surely visit you. I said God will surely visit you. I don't know who that word is for. Somebody is heartbroken. Somebody is going through hell. But I am here to tell you surely God will visit you. I said he will visit you. And when God visits you, he will wipe away your tears. He will remove your reproach. He will fulfill his word. But the visitation coming upon your life lift your voice holla fire yeah, 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 yeah. God will visit you I tell you never say be of good cheer he will visit you I am mama and Joseph said I'm dying but God will surely visit you and he will bring you out of this land I am mama and to the land which is swore to Abraham my God my God my God my God my God my God Why? the man Joseph is prophesying on his deathbed the man gave a prophecy God will visit you make sure that when the day of your exit comes carry my bones with you and so when joseph died the bible said they put him in a coffin and they embalmed him away and the bible says he was there through all the afflictions that we are going through the tax masters came exacted pain upon them the bible said pharaoh began to kill all the male despite all of this the coffin was still preserved they were going Going through hell and high water, the tax master came, brought pain and sorrow, but the coffin was still preserved. The Bible says the more they afflicted them, the more they grew. Despite the affliction, the coffin was not destroyed. They must have burnt their houses. The many of them must have been killed, but the coffin was still preserved. The day they came out, the Bible says, and Moses, on the day of their exodus, Moses took the bones of Joseph after 430 years. My God, my God, 430 years, and the bones 
bones were still intact. Not one bone was broken. 430 years of hell, 430 years of pain, and not one bone was broken. 430 years they spent in Egypt, and the bones were still intact. Pull your neighbor, say, neighbor. God is a bone keeper. Say, neighbor, how do you explain 430 years? And that is four generation, four generation, 430 years, four generation and a half. And the bones were still intact. Show me what house in Houston is still is 400 years standing, but the bones of Joseph was still intact. No matter the pain they went through, the bones were still intact because God has said, You may go through hell, you may go through high water, but I will preserve your bone. Your bone will not be broken. Touch your neighbor, say, God is preserving you. Say, God is keeping your children. Say, God is keeping your bones. Oh, mama. 430 years. Can you phantom that? The Bible says on the day they came out, they took the bones of Moses, the bones of Joseph, and they went into the wilderness. They went into the wilderness. Another 40 years of what Moses describes as a terrible desert. They went to the desert for 40 years and the bones were still intact. They went through drought. They went through all kinds of pain in the wilderness. But the bones were still intact. My goodness, are you hearing what I'm telling you? God was ensuring that the bones were preserved. Why is God doing this? Can I, you, you, you're not going to appreciate this prophecy. Because you must understand that Joseph is a type of Jesus. There are over 50 similarities between Joseph and Jesus. The Bible says Joseph was the beloved son of his father. Jesus Christ, the beloved son of God. Joseph was hated by his brothers because of his words. Jesus was hated by the Jews because of his words. Joseph was sent by his father to check on his brethren. Jesus was sent by God to check on fallen man. The Bible says Joseph was conspired against. The Jews conspired to kill Jesus. The Bible says Joseph was, was, was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. The Bible says Jesus, Joseph, was tempted by Potiphar's wife, yet he didn't commit sin. Jesus was tempted at all times, but yet without sin. Joseph was thrown in prison. Jesus was hung on the cross. Joseph, while in prison, he was, he was, he was hung. He was serving between two prisoners, the butler and the baker. Jesus was hung between two thieves. Joseph, he restored the butler back to the palace. The baker was condemned. Jesus restored the thief on the cross. One to paradise. One was condemned. Joseph, when he was brought before Pharaoh, the Bible says he went from the prison. He went to the palace. Jesus Christ, he went from the cross. He went to the he went to the throne. Joseph at the throne at the palace of, of Pharaoh. He was given it. He was given a bride, a new bride. The Bible says Jesus Christ, when he rose from the dead, he was given the bride. That is you and I, the church. Joseph, when he was, when he came before Pharaoh, the Bible says Pharaoh changed his name and gave him a new name. And by this name, he said, whatever you bind in Egypt shall be bound. Whatever you lose in Egypt shall be loose. Jesus Christ, wherefore God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that at the mention of this name, Every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. If I came by the authority of that name, I came to prophesy over your life. Whatever your challenge, it will bow down to that name. It will bow down to that name. It will give way to that name. The power of that name, I am here to tell you, get to run for what God is about to do. I have not.
spirit. Ears have not heard. He doesn't enter the heart of man. What God will do, it shall be good measure. It shall be pressed down. It shall be shaken together. It shall be running over. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can pull you down. God is on your side. Power on your side. Grace on your side. Lifting on your side. Lift one hand, shot fire. Raise another hand, shot fire. Raise one leg, shot fire. Raise another leg, shot fire. Turn around, shot fire. Oh, you run around. All of fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Somebody said, come on, Holy Ghost. Don't stand again. You go mess me up. I want to teach. When Jesus hung on the cross, the soldiers came and they began to break the legs of the prisoners. Why were they breaking them? Because on the day that Jesus was crucified, the following day was going to be a Sabbath. Not just a Sabbath, but a very special Sabbath. The Sabbath of Yom Kippur, which is the of atonement. It was a high Sabbath. Somebody say high Sabbath. And so, the Jews understand that according to the law, no prisoner should remain on the cross. Because it will violate the law of God. So now, in order for us to accelerate the process, we need to break their legs. NLT, put an NLT. NLT, quickly. NLT, read, read, read. Can you read? It was on the day of preparation, the Jewish leader did not want the bodies hanging till when? Till when? The next day. Which was what? A high Sabbath. A very what? Special Sabbath. Because it was Passover week. And so they asked Pilate to do what? Hasting the death. Church, are you enjoying teaching? How do you hasten the death? Let me explain crucifixion to you. The word hasten the death because crucifixion was not just a random thing that they did where they just carried someone on the, on, the, on the pole and put a nail, bam, bam, bam. No, there was a science to it. An exact science. The breaking of the leg is what they call crucifagrum. Somebody say crucifagrum. It's a Latin word. The word crucifagrum, it means breaking of the legs. The reason why the breaking of the legs is essential is because when a prisoner is crucified, breathing becomes hard. When the nail is pierced through their legs, the prisoner, for him to breathe, they have to push on that nail-pierced leg because that is their only support at the base. So, they have to push on it to raise their torso to take in air. Crucifixion was not designed to kill. It was designed to inflict painful death. If their intention was to kill, they will behead. Their intention was not to kill. was for him to suffer slowly. Slow death. How do the prisoners stay alive? When they are hung, they are bleeding. But they don't die quickly. They can stay there for two, three days. Each breath is laborious. For them to breathe, their nail pierced leg, they have to exert pressure to lift up their torso. <sighs> and they come back down. Pain up and down. Now, that can last for three days. But because the Jews didn't have three days to play with, because according to the, their law, no one should remain on the cross after 6 p.m. So, they have to break their bones. 
What does breaking of bone do? When they break their bone, they literally fall like a sack. Because now they have no more strength, no more leverage to lift up their legs because the legs are broken. So now they literally just, they can't breathe. They suffocate. And the death is hastened. Let us break their legs so we can what? He said, let's what? Let's hasten it by what? Breaking their legs. Somebody say crucify them. Are we okay, church? Now, Maskaidai, where have we seen this in scripture? Numbers 9 and 12. Look at the next verse. Verse 12. You all read, you all read. They must not leave any of the lamb until when? Till next morning. The Jew says, we cannot leave the body we are on the cross until the following day. It was fulfilling prophecy. Oh, toy, say neighbor. My life will fulfill prophecy. Whether the devil is... Listen, all that is happening now was the wickedness of the enemy. All that the enemy is doing is literally fulfilling prophecy. One after say, pull and say, neighbor. Let the devil keep messing. God go keep blessing. Pull us and say, let the devil keep messing. God go keep blessing. The enemy is messing with Jesus. But he's literally fulfilling prophecy. Because the Passover lamb, the true Passover lamb, cannot remain on the cross overnight. But there is a problem. If we are not going to let him remain on the cross overnight, we must do what? We must what? Thank you. I'm glad. So we must hasten the death. And how do we hasten the death? How do we hasten it? Breaking the bones. You see how God sometimes just makes, you know, he just creates impossible odds against himself. <laughs> so now we have to break his leg. Can we go further? Go to Exodus chapter 12 and verse 11. If you are not reading your Bible, I feel sorry for you. This is the law concerning the Passover lamb. It says, and you shall eat it how? With your loins gird and your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand. You shall eat it what? In haste. For it is what? The lost Passover. Can we see NLT? NLT, quickly, quickly. I like it. I like it. Can we read? These are the instructions of how to eat the Passover meal. You shall eat it what? Fully dressed. Wear your sandals. Carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal how? In urgency. For this is what? The lost Passover. Somebody say urgency. Because this urgency now, when he gave them this scripture, they did not understand. Why are we eating in a hurry? Why? Why can't I eat all dressed up? Why can't I wear my shoes? Why can't I, you know, he says, eat it like you are about to run out to the door. Why? It's a prophecy of Jesus. Jesus has to die quickly. He has to die quickly. It's a prophecy. Oh, Jesus. Why are you, are you comprehending? Candelis Avenai. I'm asking you, are you hearing me? You see how scriptures are, have a parable? It, it, it comes in a parable. It says, it is in a hurry. Why? Just eat it. It's a prophecy. Because the Messiah needs to die in urgency. The death of the... If the Messiah does not die urgently they will break his leg. And if they break his leg, that disqualifies him as the Messiah. <sighs> Pull us and say, neighbor, don't try to understand God. Just obey him. Don't try to understand. Eat it with urgency. Why? Can't we just can? Why? Why are we? Every time we eat this food, we are wearing suit. We are wearing a hurry. But why can't we just calm down? Calm down. Everything God tells you, obey. God said, forgive your husband. Forgive. No matter what he did, forgive. God said, forgive your wife. No matter what she did, forgive. You don't know anything. You can only see past your nose. 
You don't know five years from today. I don't know why I'm on this matter now. When God gave them this instruction, they didn't understand it. He said, eat it in urgency. It was 1,500 years later. We understood why this urgency was given. Because Jesus Christ must die urgently. Otherwise, what happens? What happens? What happens? They break his leg. And when his leg is broken, it, his, his messiahship is invalidated. Obey God. What did I say? Obey God. I just spoke to someone now. Obey God. When they put Jesus on the cross, the Bible says when they came, they came to the first. Can I, shock, can I surprise you? Go to Mark. Mark chapter 15, quickly. Mark 15 and 44. Watch. NLT, NLT, 15, 44. You all read. You all read. Everybody read. Everybody read. Want to go? Pilate could not believe that Jesus was already dead. <laughs> you are not following me. When, they, when, when Joseph of Arimathea came to Pilate and said, give me the body of Jesus. Pilate said, what do you mean? Is he dead? Yes, he's dead. No, it's not possible. Because crucifixion averages two to three days. Jesus Christ only spent six days, six hours on the cross. I am, I'm, somebody says six. Do I have Bible scholars here? Okay, what, how did you get six? Let's go. Look at verse 25, 25, quickly, 25, 25, quickly. Jesus was crucified at what time? At nine o'clock in the morning. Now go to verse 34, 34, quickly. Around what? 3 p.m. He cried, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That's when he died. He was cru cru crucified what time? 9 a.m. He died what time? 3 p.m. How many hours? Six hours. Six hours. A record that has never been seen before. Pilate was shocked. How could this be? Because he created the world in six days. If Jesus Christ is going to recreate the world, he does it in six hours. Oh my God. Zavak Amrias in the Kai. It took him six days. So according to that prophecy, if Jesus Christ came to make all things new, he only has six hours to do it. And how he going to do it? I heard him when he said, this one thing receive I of my father. He given me power to lay down my life and take it back up again. The death of Jesus, it came by a miracle. He prophesied his own birth. The way he, he healed the sick intentionally and walked on water intentionally and called that Lazarus from the dead intentionally. Even so, he died intentionally. Hey! Touch your neighbor, say, my God, it's an intentional God. My breakthrough shall be intentional. My turnaround will not be random. My open door will not be a fluke. It should be intentional. God, God bless me. It should be intentional. God will give us a building. It should be intentional. We are moving from here. It should be intentional. We are going to a new church. It should be intentional. My God, my God, touch your neighbor, say intentional God. He was watching time. He could have died at 3 a.m. He could have died at 7 p.m. But he was watching time. He was watching time. As he, oh my God, my God. My God. So when the prisoner on the first was broken, they took a mallet. Because now the pallet, the Jews knew that in few hours by 6 p.m. is Sabbath. All these guys must come down from the cross. So Pilate, please hasten the death. 
And so Pilate gave order. He said, go, go destroy their bones. And this Roman soldier came with a mallet. He went to the prison on the right. He pushed him. He was still alive. He took a mallet. Why? The tibula and fibula broke. Went to the left leg. Why? That one broke. He skipped Jesus. Maybe he was trying to save the best or the last. He went to the second prisoner. Pushed him. Ah! Why? Broke his first leg. Why? Broke the second leg. All right. I'm coming for you now. He went to the middle. Shoved him. The man didn't move. Shoved him again. He didn't move. You are pretending. I got something better for you. He took a spear. And the Bible says, and he shoved it in his side. The man didn't move, but what came out? Blood and water. Psh! My God. He meant it for malice. But unknown to him, when he took a spear, he was at the curbs of fulfilling a major prophecy. For Isaiah chapter 12 and 10, it tells us, and we shall look upon him whom was pierced. He didn't know when he took that spear. He was about to fulfill Zechariah chapter 12 and 10. He says, and they shall look on him whom they pierced. When the Roman soldier took that spear, he was literally fulfilling the scripture that was given concerning Jesus. Touch your neighbor, send neighbor. No matter what the devil is doing now, he's about to play the hand of God. No matter what you're going through now, it's about to play the hand of God. Zechariah 12 and 10. He says, And they, in that day, I will pour upon the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication, and they shall look upon him whom they pierce, not whom they broke, but upon whom whom they pierce, not on whom whom they broke. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. This prophecy, it came to pass, not because they liked Jesus, they wanted to hurt him, even in his death, but I heard him say, all things who are together for good, to them that love God, to them that are called, after his purpose, there is somebody here, the devil took his spare went after your marriage the devil took a spear went after your finance the devil took a spear went after your life but i'm here to tell you they meant it for evil but that spear will fulfill your prophecy it will move you to your next level it will open your door i would the devil knew he will leave you alone but my bible says had the prince of this world knew it they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. For as it is written, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Don't you never say neighbor. This will work for your good. Say neighbor. This will work for your good. They walked out on you. It will work for your good. They talk about you. It will work for your good, no matter the delay. It will work for your good, no matter the shame. Everything God work for your good. What can we say? If God be for us, tell me who can be against me? Yeah. He's a bone keeper. I say he's a bone keeper. I say he's a bone keeper. I say he's a bone keeper. I wish I had three persons who can testify and bless the name of God. He's keeping my bones. You don't know what I'm going through, but somehow they couldn't break my bone. The enemy tried, but they couldn't break my bone. I am still standing with my head on my shoulder. I am still here. My bones not broken. I don't know how.
off but there has to be a God watching over me I am kept by the power of the hey, my, 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 my. he's keeping my bones he's keeping my bones my goodness if I give the mic to two persons here to tell all that they've gone through, gone through this past 24 months, you will wonder how you're still here. All the things you're talking about, and you're still here looking smart, looking suave. You're going through hell. Your clothes don't smell like smoke. You look good in fire. You look good on fire. The fire look good on you. I said the fire look good on you. I said the fire look good on you. I said the fire. Hey, what does this tell us? This tells us, people of God, that God is committed. Do you remember when Jesus was on the cross? He cried, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, which literally means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Child of God, if Jesus was ever wrong, it was in that very moment because God didn't forsake him. Say, so how do you know he didn't forsake him? Because even in his death, God was still keeping his bones to make sure this bones ain't gonna break. You may feel abandoned, but you are not forsaken. You may feel, hey, Paul said we are cast down, but we are not destroyed. We are persecuted. We are not abandoned. Touch your neighbor, say, I am not abandoned. The man cried, because of evidence, my God, why have you forsaken me? If indeed he was forsaken, his bone would have been broken. You will go through things. You will not understand it. But one thing you must understand, my bone will not break. Stand to your feet, say, my bone will not break. Say, my bone will not break. Say, my bone will not break. Begin to declare it. My bones will not break. My bones will not break. These two shall pass. My bones will not break. 